This is Ray with School of Racing Graphics, and in this video tutorial, we're going to go through and show how to uh, create uh, dynamic effects with a holographic or engine turn uh, seamless texture. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to use the texture packs that I have uh, on my website, srgfx.com. Uh, at the end of the tutorial, or at the end of showing you how to get the dynamic effects, I'm actually going to show you how to create this one, so that if you don't want to buy ours, I'll, you can just go ahead and um, take the time to uh, make your own. Of course, I want you to buy mine, but I also want you to be able to follow along the tutorial uh, if you want to create your own and, and make your own dynamic, uh, your own dynamic fills. Uh, over here... I have on the right uh, some examples of what I've done with holographic effects in the past. Um, so these would all be considered printed. Now in your portfolio, it doesn't really matter. You're just trying to show what the car is going to look like. So that could have been an overlay that was applied to the car. Um, but mostly I set it up and I set them up for to, to print. Um, some people don't like that effect. Um, it's, you know, it's... It all depends on who you are, I guess. Uh, for me, I, I don't mind it as long as it's done with subtlety or it's done in a way that doesn't prevent um, the text from being readable. Readable. So you can see here on the sprint car, uh, I put it within the graphic, nice clean shape here. And then I got a line, uh, like a white line, so it's like the shimmer through it, right? Um, and then on this card is something totally different where I just use the dark aspect of the texture. Um, so it's not really a, a holographic or hologram effect as much as it is just uh, a repeating dark texture. Um, but I, I'll show you how to do that. Uh, and this car is probably the one that I went more more con more of a contrast with with. And I've talked about this in previous videos when you do this mirrored kind of effect look, um, you're always going to get, it's always a little bit of a minus one as far as readability goes. Uh, the, the effect is still really cool. Uh, I still really like it uh, on race cars, but uh, it's not as easy to read a number that's got a black like mirror going through the middle of it. Okay, so uh, the way the textures come in the textures pack uh, the texture pack, I'll actually show you. I got it here on my desktop. So it comes in three, the, mo the uh, hologram uh, texture pack on the website comes in three different styles so and then for each style I made each color so this is called the diamond holographic um, and and because the reason I did this like this is some people just want to download it and and fill they don't care about making all these different dynamics or getting lighting effects on it they just want to be able to fill it so I wanted them to be able to have that option that as soon as they opened it they could just drop a yellow one right into their design um, I personally always use the grayscale version and then make it more dynamic with colors behind it and using overlay um, overlay effects which is what we're going to do um, in this video and so and then we got this one which is um, kind of like the standard holographic look. Okay. Uh, and again, got all the colors in here. And these are all high resolution. I think they're 30 inches by 30 inches at 150 DPI. So they'll print really well. Uh, I made sure that there was quite a bit of details and texturing in there. So it's not just a gradient. Uh, you know, that's not all it is. It's There's a lot going on in there because I wanted it to have a, a more dynamic feel when I built it. Um, and then I have the standard, uh, what people call engine turn. So you can see there, it's kind of like that foil. And then they put the little foam or kind of uh I don't even know what it's called it's kind of like a furniture <laughs> like a furniture pad kind of a thing but they spin it right and then it, it gives you that engine turn effect it's called engine turn um so I've got those three in the pack um and then you can find those on the website here so you can just type in seamless texture pack or just go to uh seamless textures right here uh, and then I'm going to show you also at the end of this tutorial how I use the Metal Flake Texture Pack. I, I've had people uh, download this and then print it out and tell me that they were disappointed that it wasn't shiny. I don't know what the expectation was, but there, you're going to have to do some work to it if, you, if you're wanting something a little bit more dynamic than what comes in the pack. So I'll show you what my intentions were when I built this pack and how it would be used so that you have an idea of how to use it uh, moving forward. But again, that's high resolution um, and there's a lot of details in there. I, I didn't just like pop something together. It's there, there was a lot of work that went into making that se a seamless pattern that can be used anywhere. All right, so let's dive in. Uh, I've already created this number 38 and I built it with a font called Tico which is actually one of the SRGFX branding fonts. Uh, and you can just download it for free. Just Google T-E-K-O, 
in it and you'll get it. It comes with a font family. So you can download this font. I'm not going to show you how to build this style. You can see it all sitting here uh, in my appearance panel. I built it so that the video isn't really long. I just <clears throat> wanted to be able to start right in on the holographic. Uh, and then I built these, I, I pre-made these gradients, which is what we're using here uh, in the number set. And then, or in the, in the, uh, in the effect. And then I got the, uh, the uh, hex numbers here if you want them. Uh, so then you can also just add uh, black and white to that as well, because that's what I have in the, uh, in all within the number here. Um, all right. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is this is a, so this question was asked in the Facebook group page. Um, you know, how do you get your, your, um, how do you get your holographic to print like that? Or how do you, how are you printing it with all these different colors and shades coming through? And I've gotten this question quite a few times and I never really, I guess, answered it uh, super clear. So I'm just wanting to uh, make it as clear as possible. And there's a few different ways to achieve um, the effect. And so I'm going to mostly just uh, focus on this particular texture here and probably not use these other two in the tutorial. I might switch them out at the end and just see what they look like. Um, so once you have the texture pack open or a texture open of any kind, you have to open it within the context of the file you're working on. So if you're working on a wrap, open that JPEG, bring it in there, and then just make sure that it's not unembedded. You don't want it to be linked. So you would go to your links and you would make sure that this says um, unembed because that means it's embedded. If it says embed, then just click embed and it, and it embeds it into the file and then you can use it as a swatch. Okay. So now I could take this. And I can drag and drop it over here into the swatches panel like that. Okay, so now you can see it's an option. And then I just would select my number, whatever it is that I want to fill. It could be a graphic or a pinstripe or whatever. And I'm going to create a new fill. So I'm going to drag and drop this one. And I'm going to put the fill on it. And you're going to see it's going to cover it um, exactly exactly how it is here. Now, I don't like the scaling on that. I think the, the blocks are a little too big. So all I would do is just scale this down until I kind of got it into a place where I thought was helpful. I'm working at 21 inches tall is about what the number is. Yeah, 21.651. Um, so I'm going to drag and drop this in there again after sizing it down. And then I'm going to select this again, make sure I've got that fill selected, and then put the new one on there. And I think that that's pretty good. And I, I could keep adjusting depending on um, what... Um, what size or scale I was going for. So a lot of guys... They won't, they're, they're not, they're not using um, my texture pack, which is fine. They have total right to do that. They're just taking a picture of holo a holographic and then filling it in the back. The benefit of my texture pack is that it's seamless. So you can size it down as much as you want, bring it over to your swatches and then fill, fill it into the number and get and continue to get that effect no matter what. You're not limited by the size of the picture. Okay, so that's, that is a, a really good benefit to that because then you can run it throughout the whole car and you never have to worry about it breaking or looking like uh, the, the pattern breaks anywhere. Um, all right, so I'm going to go back to, I think I, yeah, a little bit smaller than what I had it. So I'm going to bring that one in and pop that on there like that. And I think that's pretty good for now, at least for this example. Um, I always like, once once I've got the, the size that I like, I don't like the other two in there because I think it increases the file size and it can bog down your file because this is, this is a pretty high resolution texture. Um, so I always go to select all unused and it'll select everything within the file that I'm not using, including those two. I actually, I don't want to get rid of that red or any of these, so I'm going to keep those. Uh, so I'll just delete these out manually so they're not here anymore. Okay, now here's where things get interesting. So I'm going to turn this off for a second and you can see I've, I've got just a standard gold kind of look in the background. This is the, these are typically the gold colors I use, which are just shades of tan, yellowish, orangish, brown kind of a thing. And you can turn them up and turn them down as far as like how brown they are or how orange they are to get different, uh, a different feel. So this is just my standard um, that I use. And really, uh, the entire texture is going to be predicated on how I've got this colored here in the background, um, because I'm going to use some overlay uh, settings so that this shows through the texture. And that's why I'm using the grayscale one and not a colored one. I don't want any mixture uh, within my within my um, texture because I, I want to have full control of the colors. So this is going to help you have full control of the colors by using this the grayscale version. So I'm going to turn that back on. 
And I'm gonna do my first setting, which is called overlay, which is probably my favorite setting. I use it a lot um, in Adobe Illustrator, in Adobe Photoshop. These are, these are common. This is in Flexi, this is in Corel Draw. This is any design software you have where you're designing, you're doing graphic design, you're gonna have some version of these settings, okay? And, so, and usually they're pretty universal. They're called the same thing, okay? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit overlay. And you can see now the color uh, is coming through the texture, all right? So it's pretty dynamic, and I, I like it. I like how the direction that it's taken so far, but there's more um, that we can do to it. And not only that, not only is there more, but you should probably understand what's going on. So I actually took this off of uh, the Adobe website just so that we can kind of get a, a better grasp or feel for what it is we're trying to accomplish. So overlay, which just assume overlay. These are the five that you're going to use the most. There's a lot of options in here. Um, there'll be scenarios where you use them, but these are the five that I use the most anyway. Um, so overlay, it, it basically multiplies or screens the colors. Okay. So depending on the base color, uh, patterns or colors overlay the existing artwork, preserving the highlights and shadows of the base color. And that's what you see happened here, right? We got dark and we go into the light, right? Um, mixing in the blend to reflect the lightness or the darkness of the original color. So in my mind, the way it, what it's really doing is just, it's giving it a really saturated look, right? It's like um, the, the white is gone. There isn't like a white in there, right? It's kind of taken a backseat, but it's taken all the darkness within the texture and like overlaid it on top of those colors and really, really saturated it out, um, which is a good look. I really like it. So if I was going to do multiply, which I don't like their description of multiply, I don't feel like it's exactly accurate, um, is multiply basically takes and, oops, let me get back to here. Uh, I'll select this. Multiply basically takes whatever black there is in your texture and it, it just uses that, right? And so now everything in the texture is gone and it's just screening the color through and not filtering it through the darkest hues of black and grays, right? So if there's any white, the white is totally gone and now it's just the black that's showing through. And then screen, again, it doesn't, I don't like their, their way they describe it. Screen does the same thing as multiply, but in reverse. If there's any whites, it brings the whites through. So now you have the whites minus the blacks. There's no black whatsoever uh, within the texture. Now I think overlay, soft light, and hard light are all super similar. Um, and so I use the, a combination of these three to really finesse what it is I'm trying to do uh, with any texture. So I'm going to set this back to overlay. Well, actually, let's look at the hard light first. So hard light, it kind of it brings through the whites and the blacks, but brings some saturation. So you can see that there, right? It's like it didn't, it didn't do exactly what Multiply did. It didn't do exactly what Screen did. Uh, it's kind of like almost a combination of both. But in combination with working with Overlay, you'll see it does some other neat stuff. And that's why it's neat to start combining them. Then you have Soft Light like this, which is sort of like overlay, but a little less, um, a little less saturated, right? And so you might be asking yourself, like, Ray, I thought we were doing holographic tutorial and you're explaining all these to me. Because if you understand how these work, you're going to get way more uh, value out of using your textures and how to use them. So don't, don't just think, this is not limited to holographic textures. This is just one way to use the holographic textures, but it's one way to use many textures, okay? So... I'm going to go ahead and you, you saw the differences now. I'm going to go ahead and go to overlay, put it on overlay. But now, because I, just because I filled it once, I could fill it again. So I'm going to take overlay over here in my appearance panel and I'm going to duplicate it. And now you can see I've got it on there twice. And now it's super saturated. Like it's, it's too much, right? But if I take that one and I start experimenting and maybe turn it to hard light and maybe drop that hard light below the overlay, right? And then I lighten up the hard light where I, oops, wrong setting. Here we go. Lighten it up. Like, let's say, bring it down to like nine. It starts bringing some of the whites back in, right? To my, to my uh, reflective uh, holographic, because hologra holographic text or holographic, real holographic fills have white in them where the light is reflecting and refracting um, through the, uh, through the shapes, right? And so maybe, at, maybe like let that sit at like 10, just to bring some of the white back through. Um, you know, I would experiment with the screen, but I think the screen, there's going to be too much white in the texture and it's going to make it so, um, it's like too blown out, right? There's going to be just too much white in it. So if I like turn it up all the way, you can see all that white. I don't, I'm not necessarily looking for, for that. So I'll delete that out. 
Then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the hard light one more time. And then I'm going to set this one to soft light and turn it all the way up like that. And, I, and mostly I'm just experimenting. But now you can see like in here in the darker side where it's like the horizon meets the ground is kind of like the vibe of that um, mirrored look. You can see it like pulls some of the color back up in there and it just gives it less of a flat feeling, right? There's, there's more dynamics happening. And then I would go through um, and just begin to adjust each one to how I wanted it, right? I might not, I might not leave them all at 100%. I might want it to be a little bit more subtle, but I want all three working together to create a more dynamic effect. Um, and now, when once I have it where I want it, um, I can go through and adjust my colors and do all kinds of other things. Um, again, I like the subtle look. So if I was going to take this gradient here, I might take, I might strip the black out of it, not the white. Um, I'll strip the black out, strip that out. And then bring this brown up to the white to create that same effect, but with a more subtle, it's got a more subtle look to it. And then I might darken that brown up some um, and, and mess with it in that way. So I, like now I could take this brown here, add some black, and, st and, and even still it starts to, well, I, I guess I didn't use the right one. Let's do that one more time. that keep getting rid of that white I'm gonna do this that's not what I want there we go and now I can bring some of those warmer tones in things like that and really start playing with it so that looks a little too red um, but you get the basic idea I can I can go through and change it and now my hologram uh, is gonna look a lot more dynamic it's gonna have more of a um, it's gonna catch your eye a lot more the texture itself um, but again, some people don't like it. it. It's kind of like it can be overdone and you can easily overdo it. And so just be careful as you're kind of going through. Like, I really like that look. Like, I want the hologram in there and there's light going through here, light going through here. It's a little saturated and rich up in these areas. Um, so there's going to be a little less contrast as far as, or a little more contrast, however you look at it, um, for, for the number, okay? So let's go back. Let's get back to base or original, Okay. And I might just play with these a little bit more. I'm going to reset my workspace. Maybe I drop like hard light out of there. So it's like even that 10% that of hard light is just really bringing a lot into this black area. So maybe I bring it down to five, right? And so we're just kind of recapturing the texture instead. Because a lot of times what a lot of designers do is they're just going to use one setting, right? And they're just going to, they're going to put one layer on there like that, and then they're just going to set it to overlay and leave it. But it's with, the, with these other settings in here, I can recapture some of the stuff and bring it back through to the surface, giving it a little bit more of a robust um, effect and, and feel uh, within it. So if you're working in a different design software like Corel or FlexiSign or something like that, you might be asking yourself, well, how do I, I, I don't have an appearance panel. Like I can't, I can't do that. Well, it's, it's really simple. You just think of it in a little bit more uh, of an archaic way. So instead of, um, you know, having just 138, so let's, let's turn this one white. Actually, let's turn it, um, this color here, hit 90 on it, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this like that, and then I'm going to apply my texture to that one that's on top, and I'm going to set overlay to it. And I would just go through and do all of those same settings in the other design softwares, just how I did them here, except they're just stacked on top of each other. So now you can see when I move it, right? It's, it's actually gray back there. Um, but when I, <clears throat> when I, and the reason it's gray and not red is because I have the, my, my canvas background to show you because you might be wondering, um, set to red. So it's, it's still acting like a canvas background that's white. If I had a red shape back there, that would be red. I'll actually show you actually in here uh let's see no it's actually not my preferences it's in document setup okay so i've set my background to that so i don't have a shape back there um so, but if i took red put it in the background now you can see it's richening it up a little bit you can see the holographic it works with both right and so 
that's that's the main idea. So even in in Photoshop, in Photoshop you can actually um, stack your styles. So you can do pattern overlay, and then you can add two more pattern overlays and do it just how I showed you in Illustrator, but it's all done through the styles uh, window pane. So it's a little bit different. Um, so just so you get the basic idea, that's how you would accomplish that same thing um, in a different design software. Build all your outlines on this one, then stack it twice, texture it, and and then play with the the overlay and opacity settings. Okay. So now we have this. Uh, I'm not saying I'm in love with this either, this 38 and how it looks and the contrast that my point is not the contrast and making it stand out and all that. Really, my point is, how do you how are you going to use these textures? Okay, so now um, I can take these. So I have this swatch here in Illustrator. This is super convenient. Um, if I want to replace that swatch, because I got it in here three times, like it, I could make a new swatch and then go through, click each one and replace them. But there's an easier way to do that in Illustrator. So I'm going to size this down a little bit. And then it's a little too small, I think. And then I'm just going to drag it in here like that. Okay. And now because I have it set up as a swatch, I could just replace the swatch. I can hold down option and then hover over the one I want to replace. And then it replaces it in all three here. Okay. When you hold down option, drag it over the one you want to replace and then release, it's going to, it's going to replace it. And so now I can, now you can see that's the diamond mosaic. It's completely different. The light hits it different. Uh, everything, it kind of works out different with that particular pattern. And then we got the standard engine turn, which I will just size it down a little bit. I purposefully build these two big so that the quality uh, remains in them. And so I'm going to go ahead and take this, throw it in here, and then I'll hold down option and drag and drop it onto there. And you can see it automatically picked it up, changed it all the way throughout all three of the different layers. And if I don't like the size, I can keep scaling it down and adding it in. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're working with textures that are roster is your document roster settings. So you want to work in 150 or 300. You, if you're in 72, this stuff's all going to look blurred. Um, the pattern can look like it's broken in where it's meeting from seam to seam. And it's really because you have it set to low resolution. So once you start introducing um, roster roster bitmap graphics into your um, stuff, like you have to consider the resolution in which you're going to design at and the resolution that you're going to print at. Um, so typically I'll design at 72 just so that it keeps my... Uh, processor working faster. And then before I go to print, I'll switch it over to 150. Um, because the, the information is all there. It's just how we're, this is just showing how we're viewing um, the, um, the, uh, the actual document. It's not actually changing the resolution. So I could turn it up to 300 and the quality is there. I could turn it down to 72. The quality is there. It's just how quickly the, the processor is working to present it on my screen. So, but I, right now I have it set to 150. Okay. So I'm going to click. Okay. All right, so now even changing the color. So I've got these three colors, I, I believe, mixed throughout. I might have done something weird and, and changed them. I hope I didn't. Um, let me look here. Okay, so I'm assuming I didn't. <laughs> um, we'll find out. Okay, so I'm going to take these and duplicate them because I want to show you too, once you have your texture applied, it's easy to change the colors and you could do it again very similarly to the way that I just did it with um, uh, with the pattern. So I'm going to make a red, which I've already got here, and I'm actually going to duplicate my red twice. I want three versions of red, right? Because I got three versions of my gold color to make up that dynamic, all right? And so um, now I'm going to turn this one this color, and I'm just going to darken it a little bit, right? Not, not a lot, just something to get a little bit more of a dynamic red, okay? And then I'm going to turn this one this color. And like that, something like that, maybe a little darker, just so that I can see it coming off the background there. Okay. And we can do this one, darken it up a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now I got these three reds, one, two, three. They're all global. That's what I really care about. I'm going to select the 38 and take a look. I got these three colors in here, okay? So now if I want those red colors to be an option in here, all I have to do is cancel that. Select the 38, select these three colors, click the recolor artwork tool, and now all I have to do is drag and drop these according to their hue, right? I know the dark one goes to the dark one. I know the medium one goes to the medium one. I know the light one goes to the light one. And then you just want to make sure that you select exact. So right now this looks pink, and that's because scale tints is selected. So if I select exact, 
it's going to go to exact and be really, really saturated. And you can see there's some blowout here and some of the details are getting lost. So we would make some adjustments so that that wouldn't happen. Um, so then I can go ahead and click OK. Right. And so now I have it set up as red instead of gold. Um, this red here. It's just a little too bright, so I'm going to bring that down and see how that starts bringing some of the hues in, things like that. Uh, or let's say I want to do it blue. There's a whole other way to change it where I could just select the, um, the swatches that I created, and I can begin to turn them blue. So this will be my light blue. And then I can drag and drop these by holding down Option over to those so they're all blue. And then I know this one's supposed to be a little darker. I'm going to go to my CMYK option. This doesn't change the document to CMYK. It just allows you to mix your color according to a CM CMYK scale, which I always like that because it gets me to black easier. Um, so there's a little bit of a darker blue, and I'll saturate that blue out a little bit. So now you can see the dynamics working there. And then again, we got our darkest blue we're going to bring in. Like that. And I might go through and change these colors a little bit more just to get them a little bit more saturated and pretty looking. Um, blue is, I'm really picky about blue. I th sometimes I think the blues in a lot of race cars are too cold. I don't like that. It's just my personal opinion. So I'll take this one. And you can see this blue looks pretty dry, but with the texture laying over it, it really helps it look saturated and nice and you know bright, right? It gives it a lot of vibrancy. Um, so I'll bring that down a little, bring that down a little, something like that. Okay, so now you get the basic idea. You can have that on there. And again, you can always just minimize your settings so that you don't have all these uh, textures on here. Maybe maybe you just want it subtle, like something like that. To me, it's you know, it's it just a, all depends on the look that you're going for and what kind of contrast um, you're trying to create. You can also do really interesting things with other colors once you start you know playing around with it. Like, uh, so I could like duplicate this one and let's say I wanted to do like, uh, you know, get a really, something really vibrant in there and you, it, you do get into a space where things start being less legible. So you just gotta, you gotta be mindful of like how you're doing stuff. Like if you're, if you're going to sacrifice legibility, um, at least do it on purpose. Don't do it on accident. Like, <laughs> what do I mean? What, what I mean is, is know that that's what's happening. Right. And then try to control it the best that you can. Um, it's really important that the 38 is really readable. Like if I was doing a blue 38, I might not do a black outline on it, just depending on the car, like whatever the background color is. Okay. So now I have this and I'm going to go ahead and select that. I have this pink and maybe before I get to the white, I'm going to add that pink in there and it just kind of, it kind of gives it a whole nother feel now, right? There's like a whole nother thing happening. So I turn on my textures again and now you can see that vibrancy and I could pull it and push it and do some other uh, interesting things with it. So there's a lot of intricacies um, that you can get with it. So that's um, a little bit about gradients. So same thing, um, you know, let's, uh, let's say for instance, I want my uh, colors to be like a, a more of a vibrant purplish pink, right? So I'm going to go ahead and, um, you know, I'll just do the same thing I did before. I'll go uh, here. This is going to be my dark purple. I'm going to go to my CMYK. Uh, bring that there. So that's going to be a really, a really rich. And then I'm going to just duplicate that over. This is going to be a little bit brighter. That. Something like that. And then one more. So it's kind of like a purple to magenta kind of a look. And I'm just, at this point, just freestyling a little bit. Just experimenting. Always got to be willing to experiment. Find out what doesn't work. Um, so something, something like that. Turn off my volume on my phone. Okay, so that's more of a kind of a magenta feel. Uh, and I would continue to play with that. I think maybe I don't necessarily, let's get some more purple in there. I said purple, let's do purple. All right, purple. Um, so there we go. So I got some purple. And now I can, I can 
play with it some more as far as, you know, maybe getting rid of that gradient uh, like that, pull it off of there and move this one around, right? So if I, I think it's too dark in that down in that area, I could just, you know, move that around up there. Um, you know, you could tighten up that, that mirrored uh, look like that, like really just get it super small. I don't really like that necessarily because it looks like a, uh, like a flat graphic with a shadow on it and not so much like a mirrored look. Okay, so something like that. And I just keep playing with that. Obviously, the background color of the car would not be red if I was using a purple number, uh, at least not in my opinion. I don't think that's a good idea. And I can really play with the brightness even more. That. So being willing to experiment. So then I could take this, like let's say, okay, I'm not, I'm done with the holographic look. Um, I want to use a different texture. So that's all three, right? So I, I might go through and adjust my hard light, soft light, that that kind of a thing. Because this is actually the, so saturated, it's it's pulling the red through the color. So you're getting a lot of red in there, which maybe is okay, depending on the car. But even this, um, I've had, like I said before, I had people download this and they're like, how come this doesn't print shiny? And it's going to print exactly what it looks like. So you're going to have to do some work with it to get it where you want it. Uh, I don't, I always like my, all of my resources, I like them to, to be in a place where you have a lot of options that you can work from instead of locking you in. So for instance, if I put the mirror in this, now you're locked into the mirror. You have to have it. Or if I put a light thing through it, you, you're locked into that light. I would rather you have this, which is the thing that is harder to create, and then take three seconds and create a gradient that overlays it. Um, you know, so stuff like this, like when I create this kind of stuff, I research, I research, I research. Um, then I spend hours picking it apart, testing it, doing stuff to it, seeing if it works the way I want it. It's not just, it's never a slam together thing for me. It's always like, how, how would I use this and how would I want it to be used? Right. And so that's how I'm trying to think it through. So now I could take this and again, I could just, depending on the scale, I think these are also 30 inches. All right. So, um, I could, I could size it down if I want the metal flake to be a little bit more uh, detailed, right? So I'm going to size it down just a little bit. You can see all the little light flecks in there, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and do this, drop it on here. And then I'm just going to replace the texture that we had, uh, that we were using, which is this one, okay? And now you can see we've got this really kind of pretty um, metal flake texture in there that it's subtle, right? It's not meant to be, a, it's not meant to be like super intense. Um, but I might, what I might do is change it around a little bit so that, um, it, uh, so that the, the whites come through a little bit. So like this hard, I got, I got this one here set to hard light. What if I set it to screen just to get a little bit more of the whites out and I brought it to the top, right? And so that did, that pulled it a little bit brighter. But what happens when I pull that all the way up to 100%? Uh, it's going to present an issue with blowout, right? So this is where it gets into the weeds a little bit, but this is kind of like the, how I think and operate. So what I'm going to do is take this guy here, and I'm going to go to, uh, let's say, I'm going to take a second here. I didn't plan to do this in this video, but now I'm going to do it. So Because I want you to see all the options that you have. So especially like when you're working in Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator, they, they like cross pollinate. They're like brother and sister. They work really, really well together. Um, and so, but there's some things that you can do in Photoshop, at least easier that, than you can do um, in Illustrator. So I'm going to go ahead. I just hate that. I'm going to go ahead and turn this. So it's already sees that my clipboard size because I copied it. So I'm going to create that. And then I'm just going to paste this in here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and just pull in a new adjustment layer levels. Okay. And in my levels layer, I'm just going to, I'll just click. Okay. And now I have the ability to bring all this down and really turn up my whites. And so now you can see my white flex, right? Just get it in the space that I want it. So, 
And this is just, again, it's an experiment. Like I, you know, I, I don't know what, if it's going to work or how it's going to work. I just know that I know the result that it gives. So now I'm going to go ahead, flatten that, flatten that. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring this over. It's already the size of the other one. So it should technically overlay perfectly. So now I have basically this duplicated. Okay. So I'm going to take this, drag it over here. All right. And then I'm going to take uh, this fill layer here and I'm going to set it to the new one. Okay. And now you can see it's there and it's at 5% and it's set to screen. But what's it going to do? It's going to bring all my whites up, all my white specs because screen lets, uh, what's it say? It multiplies the inverse of the blend base color. The resulting color is always a lighter color. So just to really simplify what a screening, what the screen does, it lets light, it lets white show and everything else doesn't. Okay. And so, um, if I don't like the screen, I can, I can again hit overlay. Now the overlay is taking all the black and it's oversaturating it. Soft light, hard light, right? So screen is the guy. Screen is the one that works. Or maybe lighten. Let's see what lighten does. So lighten does something pretty neat, right? Or screen. So we'll stick with screen. But you get the basic premise. The basic idea is without the screen, all those little white flecks that are that have little like blurs on them, they just they kind of blend in. Um, but then when as soon as you do that screen on just that one, because we got we put so much black in it. The screen made the black disappear and just had the white show through. Uh, and then I could just, if I don't like that they're exactly like so bright, I could turn them down. They don't have to be at 100. I could bring them down to 60 or whatever. So a lot of experimentation that you can do um, with textures. So just think of them in that way. Get proficient in Photoshop and Illustrator or whatever other program you're using um, because you, you just have so many options at your fingertips once you have the texture made. Okay, so the last thing as promised, I'm going to show you in Illustrator uh, how to make this particular texture. Um, and it's not that hard, but there, it is a little bit of a hack because Photoshop has a setting that Illustrator doesn't, but I'll be able to do this. And then Corel and Flexi probably actually have an easier way to do this, which is sometimes that's a little bit surprising, but <laughs> uh, it is what it is. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to make an ellipse. So that just means a circle, okay? And I want to set a gradient to it. <clears throat> but I want to set it on the stroke, okay? So I'm going to actually make a gradient from gray and black. So first I'm going to fill with it. So I'm going to go uh, black. And actually, let's just get to something a little simpler. So we'll go here, okay? I'll strip this guy out just so that we can do it right from scratch. Okay? And so I'm going to bring uh, the black down. And I'm going to lighten them up a little bit to a, like a silver. Because I want to, I want it comparable to what I was using here. Not, not anything super intense. I don't want it black, that's for sure. And then I'll bring uh, white in. So this is going to have a lot of contrast. And this might have a little more contrast than the one I'm using. But the basic tutorial will kind of get you through it. Where you can, you can adjust these colors on the front end. Um, you know, easier the more these or if you if you decide you want to make make some of this um, and you might make a couple of different ones with different you know where they're reflecting and refracting in different directions if that makes sense okay so go ahead and move that around just make sure that whatever the ending color is is also the ending color otherwise you're going to end up with a hard line in your gradient and i'll show you why here in a second okay so now i'm going to take that um i'm going to lighten these up just a little more i'm going to go down to like 60 Okay, something like that. And it doesn't matter that they're even or anything like that because we're going to adjust them. Okay, so now I'm going to set that to uh, a stroke. And so you'll notice in Illustrator, you got three settings, linear, radial, and then you got free transform gradient. And I'm not going to explain those right now, but we don't, what we don't have is angular. And angular is something that's in Photoshop. Um, and I'm going to show you, we're gonna, so we're going to hack this and then achieve an angular gradient. Uh, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to have the stroke set to, or the stroke set to the gradient, which has something similar uh, to a to the, to that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead set the the uh, gradient the gradient to the stroke, and then I'm going to turn the stroke up. 
and you can see what's happening is the the gradient instead of it just being uh, straight like it was before because we set the second setting which is called uh, just apply the gradient along the stroke which essentially just finds the center point of the shape works its way out gives it that angular effect like that okay so I'm gonna just keep turning this up and I'm gonna prefer actually in this instance to work in pixels so I'm gonna change my units and press uh, just so that I can be a little bit more um, precise with what I'm doing so my stroke is set to pixels Okay, so now you can see it moved over a pixel. So now I can go uh, 300 because we're going to end up with this weird little dot in the middle and we want to close it up the best we can. So there's the dot. Okay. But you can see it's already kind of got that shimmer look to it, right? And that's what we're after. Um, and it's actually, I'm not, I'm not even going to change the gradient, but if I wanted to, I could start pulling stuff, right? And pulling it different directions. Um, so that I get like a, and that's what I mean by the hard line. See, cause this is different than this. Okay. So you want this over here. Um, so I'm just going to leave it like that, but you can, you can move these around or get rid of, get rid of this or whatever. Um, and it'll still give you that kind of, you know, holographic type of a type of a shape. So I'm going to keep arrowing up. If you're, if you're, if you just highlight your stroke and then hit arrow up, it just goes up in one increment. If that makes sense. I guess you could do the same thing right here. And I'm going to get really close to this guy here because I really want to see. Because at a certain point, you get if you get too close, it starts opening back up again, right? So I can sit here and do this like that. Okay, that's pretty well closed up, I think. So now I'm going to zoom back out. Now, you can't do that on a square, okay? So that's really important. This It has to be um, a... It has to be a an ellipse. So if I do this on a square, if I was to just take this, what I just did, and apply it to this square, you're going to see the results are weird, right? It's just not going to work. Um, so it has to be on ellipse on an ellipse, okay? Now what I'm going to do, this is going to become a rasterized feature uh, within Adobe Illustrator, okay? So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to affect it. So we're going to texture, and then we're going to grain it, all right? And so it's going to open up all these options for me. Right, and then I can determine it's really zoomed in. This this is actually similar to the way Photoshop works. So I could bring this in Photoshop and do the same exact thing. Um, and so uh, I'm going to turn the the intensity up, and I'm going to turn the contrast up because we want what we're trying to achieve is noise. And I can say regular, and it gives it a little bit more. Okay, but we we need noise to be in there. If there's no noise, it won't work. <laughs> okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And it's going to take it a second to process. Hopefully my computer doesn't decide it's going to like crash. All right, there we go. All right, so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to go to and go to object, uh, rasterize, okay? So we're rasterizing um, and I'm going to keep that transparent for now. So now that I've rasterized it, give it a second to rasterize. And I'm going to make sure I'm clean. Yep, nice and clean. Okay. Uh, now I can go, I think I can uh, convert to grayscale. There we go. So now all my little grains are grayscale. And that's what we want. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to take that shape and I'm going to go to uh, blur. So I'm going to go to effect, blur, and I'm going to go to radial blur. And the one annoying thing in Illustrator is, is there's no preview on this. And so you kind of got to just do it. And if you don't like it, undo it and do it again. So essentially what this is going to do, it's going to blur it in a, in a, in a round shape, right? And that's going to give us our engine turn kind of a, an effect. That's why we popped noise on it. So I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to give it a couple of seconds because it's going to take a minute to, uh, to do that on a high resolution on a high resolution bit here. So there you go. Now you can see it's kind of got that uh, brushed metal detail, right? We want those kind of little details in there. Just really, it, one, it just shows that you really care about your work. Um, I could have just did a gradient and left it as a gradient, okay? But that's not how we're going to do things. All right, so now I'm going to take this and I'm just going to take a square and I'm going to make sure it's perfectly square, not, not a rectangle at all. And I'm just going to change it a different color right quick so that it's easy to see. And I'm going to center it over this guy. Okay. And I got to size it down just a little bit. Just a little bit more. 
and I'm going to make sure it's centered, okay? And now I'm going to create um, a clipping mask on it. Make clipping mask, and so now I have my square. And maybe this could have been more saturated, like darker. Like I didn't, maybe I, I lightened it too much. I, I, but you kind of get the idea. We could have made up all those adjustments while we were making the gradient. And so I'm not going to go back and fix all that. Um, and then what I'm going to do is see if I can't rasterize this so that it just becomes the shape. Okay. So we still have our circle back there. Actually, we don't, we don't have the circle back there. So we're just going to leave it just like that. So now I can just size this down. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and drop it on here. Then I could take and just fill that in, all right? So what I'm going to do is uh, just replace this guy, which is the one I was using. Now you can see we're getting a weird thing going on with all this separation, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the size of this, copy that, bring see that over there, all right? And now what I'm going to do is take this and double-click my swatch, and you can see it's telling you oh, all these gaps. So we just got to break it down to the size that the actual square is. Like that, hit done, and now I'm going to replace the one that I did a second ago, and now it's all together, just like that, okay? And if I don't like the size, I can just size it down some more. So now I'm going to bring it over here, get my size first, like that, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, double click it. Okay, there we go. And just paste that my my size in that I had, just like so. And now I can fill it with the new one. Just like that. So you see, there you, now you're starting to get that same exact effect. And if I want it to be richer, uh, I can just turn my overlay back up. You know, pop a little bit more, uh, change soft light to hard light. Gives it a little bit more um, of the white. Can bring that down um, or multiply. And again, it just brings through the black. And so you got all your effect settings sitting right there. Uh, and then I just turn this guy off, the, the thing like that. So that's my basic work through. I know it kind of took a little bit, a little while, but I really, I wanted to fully explain exactly how to get those effects and know that like the sky's the limit. You could do a lot of different things. Um, a gradient through the middle is just one option, right? You, you could do like, let's say you just want to do a subtle dark blue to a lighter blue or something like that. Um, or maybe you only want to uh, apply these uh, settings on like a stroke. You don't actually want them on the, in the middle of the number or something like that. So you got all these different options that you can go through with textures um, once you have them built and, and, and usable. So if you guys don't mind, I'd really appreciate it in the bottom right-hand corner. If you're not watching this live, there'll be a little button. You can hit subscribe uh, and that'll subscribe you to our YouTube channel. If you're not if you are watching live, you can go over to our YouTube channel at any time, hit subscribe on our channel page or on any of our videos. We would just uh, really appreciate it. We're going to release a lot more videos like this. Um, I hope you found this super helpful. If you need anything, you can hit me up on the support page at srgfx.com backslash support.